Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Activities for People Living with Dementia. We're proud to offer this series with funding from the Area Agency on Aging and the United Way of Tarrant County. Some of our programs are recorded and some are made available for viewing through a YouTube channel for future use. I am Martha Brown, your host for today's activities. Today, um, Peggy, I hope I'm getting this right, <laughs> da, 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 da. should be changing seasons from the Eamon Carter Museum of American Art. And I can't wait to see the color. Peggy, show us color today. I will for a little bit. And then, then I got to keep you grounded in your blacks and whites. You're funny. All right. So we're going to, I'm not going to do a lot of talking for this first um, artwork. First, I'm going to show you artwork. And then I'm going to show you a, a little documentary video I worked on with our curator a few years ago. It's about four or five minutes, but you get to hear the curator talk and the conservators talk about this particular piece that now hangs in, um, in our museum. And it's right when you walk in across from the museum store. So it's not in a traditional art gallery but it, um, it hangs up high because it was initially created or it was initially painted inside a bank um, or it might have even been a post office before a bank, but it was meant to be viewed kind of from a distance. And so um, we're gonna talk about the history of this piece because it's now not where it was originally meant to be hung. So I'm gonna play the video, it is open caption. So you should be able to hear, but if you have trouble hearing, you'll be able to, to follow along. So let me go to the next slide. We'll let Shirley, our curator Shirley, do the talking. Oh. She went away, didn't she? She did. You hit the wrong button, I bet. It's not even here. <laughs> good morning, good morning, Mike and Marge. Hey, Mike and Marge. You're on mute, but that that's okay. It's and that I, you're not on mute, but I can't hear you. I wonder what's going on. I see your mouth move. <laughs> oh, I got a smile. Maybe the sound is down. Man, I have it muted. Peggy says, my computer just turned off. We'll be right back on. <laughs> <laughs> it was overload with the video. <laughs> it could be. Come on, Martha. We will tell jokes until you get back. <laughs> there you go. Well, Mike and Marge, what's life been like for you two this last week? I haven't seen much of you. Oh, you know, I can barely hear you. There's a little something going on that, uh, did any, can anybody have any ideas about how to turn up their end of the volume? No, they must have to push a button. Maybe it's the computer itself that is on low. Ah, and here comes Marge, maybe that'll be better. Marge, we can't hear Mike. Yeah, now turn yours off. Put your mute on. <laughs> and then you too. Hi, Martha. Hello. Uh, you're still doing some reverb, Marge. All well, this morning. I'm sorry. Yeah, we had trouble with his. We. Oh, but you, I turn yours off completely. I, I'm so sorry. A calculator fell off my shelf and. <laughs> oh, wow. I perfectly hit the off button on my computer. <laughs> Let's try this again. Okay, pull up. Where am I? All right. All right, take two. Nothing, everything is pushed off. Nothing should fall right now. Well, it was perfect timing. It couldn't have been, couldn't have been more perfect when you said, Let's let someone else talk and then. <laughs> That's, that's going to be my new technique when I don't feel like talking about something I'm going to say, and now will, and then I'll just pull the plug on my computer. 
Oh, all right. right, here we go, gang. Take two. Okay. Oh my gosh. Now, Mike and Marge still need to turn off one of their computers. I'll teach you. Okay. Teach you. Teach you. By a Texas artist named Otis Dozier, who actually grew up in Texas. He was born in Forney, raised in Mesquite on a cotton farm. Knew he always wanted to be an artist, always sketched outdoors. So during the Great Depression, when it was such a terrible economic crisis, under Franklin Delano Roosevelt's New Deal program, um, there was first called the Public Works of Art Project. And that um, then was succeeded by the Treasury Department's section of painting. And it was a means of commissioning artists to employ artists to work um, during such harsh times. And so what this division would do is create competitions for artists to submit sketches to for murals to decorate public government, public buildings, primarily post offices. And the idea behind it was to create a mural that celebrated the local industry, the local culture. And he looked at the fact that under the New Deal program, there had been funding for orchard planting and so pecan planting. So it's kind of this optimistic outlook of better times are ahead. This family is succeeding and so will you. So it was an uplifting message to all those who entered the post office. The post office that Dozier created it for had become a bank, a, a branch of the Worthington Bank. And the bank is potentially, the owner of it is thinking of selling it. So there was that potential loss of the artwork. And it was something that we knew we wanted to maintain and keep the artwork in the community. There were some tack holes in the mural at the top from where um, a frame had been attached and along the bottom it had started to detach, but basically it was in excellent condition. Very distinctive brown nicotine layer on the surface in addition to a grime layer because it was next to a window. The window was on the left side of it. And over the years, of course, they'd open the windows before air conditioning and, and have fresh air come in. So all the pollutants from the road came in. The mural is attached to a wall with white lead adhesive. And that made it a little more problematic because white lead is toxic. So we had to take more precautions in removing it. We had to wall off the area where we were working. We had to wear suits and gloves and some protection when we're removing it from the wall. We were able to slip in a, a handmade spatula. We went to, at one point we had to go to Home Depot and find some long rulers that we ended up fashioning and something that was flexible and thin that we could put underneath between the mural and the wall. There are conservators, Claire Berry and Peter Van den Lortel, um, were instrumental in restoring the work. So it actually arrived to them. The best way to travel it was to wrap it on what's called a sono tube. And so it came with a protective tissue on it. So the painting was brought, rolled to the Kimball Art Museum and they unrolled it face down on a padded surface or cleared surface and proceeded to remove the residual adhesive that would it remained on the, and then it was strip lined at that point. So an edge was attached to the, to the back side of the painting and any tears or holes or distortions were flattened and mended. The whole process probably took a, at least a month, seven weeks or so. There are of all the murals still existing, there's 106 murals in Texas that were created under this government program. The rarity of being able to have one is in the museum is unique. It's mostly fun. I hate to, it is really fun. Uh, it's to, to take something that you know is a treasure and bring it out to what it, close to what it was originally. It's just real joy. That's a much better explanation of the history of um, the artwork. Here's the, the painting. It's um, 
44 by 144 inches long. So you saw it hanging on the wall, how mm -hmm. the type of space it took up. But I thought for changing seasons, I'm sure pecans have started falling. If you have any pecan trees in your yard. Um, hey, Peggy. Yeah. How did it get from the Kimball to the, to the Eamon Carter Museum? On a truck. Okay, I mean, what, why, did they, why did they move from the Kimball to, to the Eamon Carter Museum? So the Kimball has a really nice painting conservation lab. Oh, okay. We have a really nice photography and works on paper conservation lab. Okay. We also do not have a paintings conservator on staff. So Claire Berry, who was, she's uh, retired since, uh, was the um, head conservator for paintings down at the Kimball. I mean, she's very well known in the industry. And so often, and I think we still do have our artwork conserved down at the Kimball um, that are paintings. All of our photos, we have a wonderful works on paper and photographer conservator both on staff here. So. Um, Sometimes they might send work up here to get conserved as well. But we had like a reciprocity between the conservator. Mm -hmm. So, and they have, you can kind of see, this is um, Peter. He is um, doing the in painting on the edges once it had been put on the canvas. And, but you can see that there are big windows behind them. There's a lot of really wonderful natural light in that conservation lab, as our lab is too. Um, so that it, natural lighting is very, very helpful when going in and conserving. And we use other lighting methods, methods too, to see. Um, okay, the, the difference it makes from that. Yeah. One. So then here too, and you can see this was when it was still in situ. At <coughs> and this is um, when one of the, so we had a conservator who helped remove it from the wall. The woman that was speaking with the glasses in the blue. Yes. She, um, she's a contract. Uh, conservator we had from Dallas come. So her specialty was doing mural removal, things like that. So she removed. And then once it was brought to the Kimball, then Claire, Barry, and Peter stepped in to do the painting conservation of it. So there are, we had different experts along the way. And then when um, the artwork moved, we just laid it in a, in a truck and we had our couriers bring it up and then bring it into the building. Mm -hmm. Very good, yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's much bigger than I thought when I first saw the picture. Yes, yeah. I don't have a picture of it in situ, but you saw it. Um, Lying yeah. on the floor, yeah, it was yeah. huge. It's, it's really big. And then even on the wall, the wall um, that it hangs on now is kind of right when you walk in um, on one of our entrances. And it's hung up high deliberately because that's how it was meant to be viewed. It was not meant to be viewed at an eye level. So there are, you know, there are some distortions because you are meant to be viewing it up. And as it, when we saw it in the bank too, or the, once it, what it once was a post office, mm -hmm. um, some of those details too don't matter because you're not looking at it up close. So there's in, in keeping the spirit of how the artwork was meant to be viewed, we deliberately hung that artwork up high. What was the name of the tube? I tried to look it up and there wasn't anything to look at. Sonotube. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a lot of construction type thing. I mean, it's, it's just a big drum. Okay. But that can roll. So it's, you want it to, you want to move the artwork as little as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, which makes common sense, especially one that, even though it was in really good condition, there was still damage to it with some tearing and some um, with the stretching and stuff. So, but now it's on view. It's been on view since we um, hung it, and it's now a little piece of Texas history that didn't go away with the the selling or demolishing of the building. This was in the same era as the WPA. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. This was essentially an offshoot of that whole thing. The government, this is a government commissioned artwork. And so Shirley said there were 106 government commissioned murals painted in Texas mm -hmm. during that time. Beautiful. So yeah, so this is just, it's a hopeful scene. It's a happy scene. And it was meant to be celebrating 
that this part of Texas. So some of you might even have pecan trees in your yard. Some of you might collect a, a pecan. So, you know, it's still relatable today on some level. Mm -hmm. Some of us cook with them. Yep. Yep. My goodness. All right. So there's a woman on staff who has a big tree in her yard. And so every year she ends up gathering all of them and then they spend like the rest of the year cracking all of them and she freezes them and then you get your pecans for like a holiday gift from her. Oh wow that's mm -hmm. great. Nice. I know it's a lot of commitment. Mm -hmm. All right Ooh. we're switching gears. I've got you more fall colors. That's beautiful. I was gonna say I heard some I heard some pretty immediate reactions so yet is thinking it's beautiful. What what are other people thinking? Oh, it's uh, it's it's uh, very seasonal, very fall. Very fall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What to you is the screams fall? The color. The color. The color of the trees. Yeah. 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 It's um in as you can see by the title, Eagle Rock, New Jersey. Uh, so this particular artist um was a member of the Hudson School, Hudson River School. And uh, we've looked at a Hudson River School painters before, but it's that very kind of glowy, idealistic landscape type of painting. And a lot of times they're really massive paintings. Um, if you go into a landscape gallery in an art museum, you'll almost always see an, a Hudson River School one. Beardstock was a big one, a big artist, if you know that name. Um, Thomas Cole. Mm -hmm. And so... Anyway, here, this artist was part of that group, but this was a bitty, this is only 10 by 20. So this isn't huge, mm -hmm. like some of those massive um, landscapes that were typical of, of this group. So he's not as well known as a lot of the, as a lot of the painters that were producing. He's also the only artist who was from the Hudson River Valley area, interestingly enough. So um, what's really cool is I'm going to switch screens for a minute we um have we're part of the google arts and culture project and so um years ago we had the a photograph taken of our artwork and it was one of the google zooms that you can go in extremely close wow the, some of the um detailing within the artwork. I mean, so much so you can see the cracking of the, the oil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see brush strokes. So even though we can't, we, you wouldn't see it, it's on view right now, you wouldn't see it at you know a massive scale. You do have your, on your computer, you are able to really zoom in and get closer than you would be allowed in the gallery to, to observe some of the details. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of detail on such a small. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah it yeah. really is, and it's really beautiful when you walk in the gallery. Even though it is tiny, it, it does catch your eye. The colors are just yeah. very tranquil, very mm -hmm. um, calm. Do you and know so, why there's a chair in the picture? I think this was just this was a lookout point. It still is, I believe, in New Jersey. This is this area is a little north little northwest of Newark and so it was a really nice lookout point across the the river you would see um Newark City so I think um that's just a natural something you would have seen in the natural setting of it so okay. I noticed uh, Peggy that uh, he's got a little detail in the pictures but he still didn't put faces on the people no and it it wouldn't it doesn't read that way. We're looking at it the way we probably shouldn't be looking at it by zooming, 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 zooming in. Okay. Yeah. When you're when you're looking at this artwork, those people are barely a couple of inches. In right. That. Right. So that detail, he gets enough of the person that we don't need those details. Okay. But by the way, I, I I like that that the way of painting. It saves me from drawing real faces sometimes. Uh huh. <laughs> Faces are hard. Yeah. They are. They so, is, so there's like a, a, some buildings in the background there. Is that just uh, uh, just a uh, settlement or something? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's 
not far from Newark. It oh, Newark, from, okay. Newark, it wouldn't be far from um, Hoboken, and then on the other side of the river would be New York. So it could be- Okay, 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 thank you. I understand yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, and this was in the 1860s too, so that whole part of the East Coast was pretty built up by, I mean, not, oh, that, that, not the way it really, is now, but built. That really puts it in historical perspective then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there, this is such, it just is calming, it's gentle, it's gracious, mm -hmm. it just feels very um, peaceful. Mm -hmm. Which is, all right, so now let me go back to the slide show. So yeah, that Google Arts and Culture is also, it's a lot of fun if you ever feel like, um, we only have, I think, 38 artworks that have that deep dive, um, but you can really look at some cool details. Okay, so now we're gonna go to something that's a totally different vibe, but very similar okay. color palette. All right, um, you're good to go. Uh, so this is Georgia O'Keeffe. Have we looked at this one before? I don't think we have. No, I don't, I don't think I don't so. Really no. Know. Okay, I couldn't remember. I'm starting to lose track of what ones we've seen. Um, this is typically on view. It's not on view right now. It's on loan. Um, but this one is a showstopper when you see it in the galleries. It's not massive. It's 36 by 30. So it's not huge. Mm -hmm. um, and it's in a very simple white frame. You can kind of see the white frame edged along. Um, but it's white. It's, what, it's entitled White Birch. So the title helps us. I mean, you could probably figure it out too. But what are you seeing? Go ahead, Don. Oh, sorry, I just said branches of a tree. Bran yeah, branches. What do you yeah. mean? Yeah. And then the yellow leaves, probably. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. It reminds me of a Wait. heart. Before you said that, I saw flowers. flowers. Like exotic okay. flowers. The yellow like, or the white? Which part would be the flower? The yellow. The yellow. Like, and maybe the white was the um, stamen. Is that what you call it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you're not, you're, you're right in that it's a natural plant, something you would see in nature, but <laughs> it is a, what it, and she painted those types of plants herself in, in other artwork. But here we're just looking at the white birch. Don, were you starting to say something or Yetta? No, no, not me. No, I didn't, but I was thinking they, you know, you see little leaves, which mm -hmm. is normal birch leaves. Is it because she has painted the sun behind it? Do you think that it's so yellow? So, so this is another one. Of, um, this the trees are changing, and she's painting in Lake at, in Lake George in um, the upstate New York. So it's probably the actual color of the tree, the leaves changing, like you might see the aspen leaves changing in the Rocky Mountains or something like that. Mm -hmm. Probably pretty, maybe you know, heightened a little bit, but pretty true to the color she would have seen, which was what attracted her to drawing or to painting the birch tree. She and um, Alfred Stieglitz, who was a very well-known photographer um, of the time in, in New York City and had a gallery of avant-garde artists and put a lot of artists on the map, including Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, this was his wife. And so they would go up to his family's uh, house up in Lake George, and she turned one of the old barns into a studio, and which is very much inspired by everything she saw in that part of the country. And so uh, they would go up a lot in the fall, and um, this was just, there were white birches in that part of, of the country, and so she would just paint what she saw. But it was a, it's a combination of both. We, you know, you knew it was a tree. Granted, the title always helps. It doesn't yeah. always usually help. You could tell that there were, you know, the trunks and the branches, and then some hints of leaves. You see, you guys have pointed mm -hmm. out little shapes, but it's it's really abstracted. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. I was gonna say. It's it's you know, white birches are not pure white like that. They have mm -hmm. marks on the on the on their branch on their trunks. So it looks like it's it's abstracted for artistic purposes. Absolutely. I mean, and that's, and she was really good at distilling things in nature down to basically the essence. So yes, you're right. Some of those, the markings, the brown 
tearing or crinkling of some of the bark isn't there, but you knew exactly what type of tree she was getting at. If it yep. weren't a birch, I would have guessed an aspen. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's it's so beautiful. And so she had very, um, you know, there's always the criticism that her artworks represent female genitalia and all this. And she's <laughs> always very adamant at saying, please don't put your Freudian views on my personal experiences with these with these plants in nature. So get your mind out of the gutter, people. That's right. I think it looks like a heart. Well, an anatomical well, uh, heart. Yeah, with aorta and, and veins and stuff yes. like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Reminiscent mm -hmm. of a heart. And it's very zoomed in. We're not seeing the totality of the, the right. tree, but we're seeing enough to know that it is a tree. All right, so I got to end on a black and white one because I got to end on a black and white one. Um, well, okay. Tally, <laughs> yeah, just hold a gun to my head, but here's um, Tal Sky Autumn. And even though it's not in color, I still, it still feels like that autumn crisp to me. Do you feel that way when you see this? Well, yeah, because leaves are falling from the trees. The leaves and the clouds, you know, that fall cloud, that late afternoon feeling. I don't know. It just feels very fall to me, even though there's not one orange or red or yellow leaf to be seen. It seems like almost winter to me. There are hardly any leaves on there at all. Okay, Taos is in the mountains, so they probably do lose their leaves a lot faster than other parts. But this, we've looked at photographs from this photographer before. He, um, he was both a commercial photographer and an artistic photographer, but he had success in both and, and um, people knew his, his artworks. And then he was mostly producing between the 40s and the 70s. He was based in Denver, but bounced between Denver and Cals. And then um, his, he, his mental health started to, uh, he started becoming a little unstable in the 70s. And then in the 80s, um, it got worse. And then in the 90s, he was institutionalized. Um, so no one really know, like his work was very beautiful, but then because he kind of fell out of practice, he wasn't able to get jobs anymore in the 80s. Um, it, he kind of, his name sort of fell out of, out of popularity. So Peggy, I mean, even though this, it's black and white, I can kind of imagine that that sky is really deep blue that you see up in the mountains. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can tell it's that, that sunny type of fall day where. Yeah. Clear air. Yeah. It's not dusky. No. It's a very striking photograph. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. So those are our changing seasons. I know we're still in the 90s here, but I feel we're getting a little bit of a taste of fall in the air. Yeah. Um, getting there. We're getting there. We're far from there, but we're getting there. Oh. Um, next week, we are looking at bows and arrows. So oh, right. bows and country. arrows. OK. I'll have to remember to tell John that he loved that one. Oh, good. All right. Well, right now. <laughs> I will um, see y'all next week. With this weekend, we have our um, our annual party on the porch. So we have a country musician coming and performing. It's free. And so anyway, if you you might see us on the news this weekend. If so, if you're, if you're looking for something to do, come to the museum. So. Have a great time, Peggy. All right, All right yeah. friend. Thank yeah. you. I'll talk to y'all next week. Thanks. Thank you, Peggy. Yeah. Bye. 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 Yay, Peggy. Woohoo. Well, uh, why don't we say good, uh, look at what's coming up and then say goodbye to this, and then we'll go over to Fifth Street Cafe. So don't go away. <laughs> okay, Peggy's going to do this two more times today at 1130 and at 130. Tomorrow, we have flipped our Tuesday, Thursday for this week, and we're playing bingo all day tomorrow. 10.30, 11.30, and 1.30. And just because it's so easy, Friday, we're having pet therapy with Kate and Jet 
I'm assuming that Kate is the, the person and Jet is the animal. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we're going to find out what pet therapy is on Friday. So there you go. Just a little hint of what's coming up.